please welcome uh, Andre Lescher, and he will talk a little bit about Modo in pipelines. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, and and good morning. Yeah, I'm I'm new to the show here, and I'm I'm happy to be here. So uh, I, I read a little bit that that Modo and and Blender and some other applications are new to to this year, and and so I, I hope I can show you something interesting about Modo and high, uh, how how um, uh, my colleague and uh, I using Modo in our pipeline. So to to uh, to understand what's uh, what's the um, reason I choose Modo uh, to work with, uh, I just want to start explaining a little bit what what I'm what I'm doing. And um, uh, the the last ten years, I'm I'm working on bringing tasks or productive areas together. And I started uh, with 3D and Blender in 2006 and. Uh, with with a good colleague of mine, uh, we we create a graphics design and find out. For, for me, it's it's always a problem to take Photoshop and create something awesome because I'm not the artist to to create digital media in in Photoshop. So uh, for me, Blender was a, a really good uh, way to to create a graphic for two D graphic design. And so we started to create. Um, incorporate designs for for companies uh, based on 3d uh, graphics and uh, bring that together with his way of uh, doing uh, content of creating content for for print and screen and also for hardware devices and uh, that was um, uh, the way we we started bringing 2D and 3D together. So for 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 our work for the company, um, it was much easier and much more flexible than only to create content with the 2D uh, uh, program like Photoshop. And uh, we 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 brought that uh, to to a point that we can also create content for the hardware devices. So the company not only can present um, this uh, graphic design within print section or web design, uh, but also on the, on the hardware devices. So the menu in the, in the phone using the same graphic design than the print design in the catalogs. And that together uh, comes to a point where we uh, just uh, try to, to use this and get some um, concept work to create new hardware for them and just combined with, uh, with the imaginary we, we create for printing and uh, web and screen design. And um, we, we found out that um, uh, that this way of working uh, is, is a very good starting point for um, building content for touch devices. Because I know today flat design is really great, okay, but we found out, um, especially for, for showrooms or for, for museums, the people are just uh, more curious about elements that are haptic that they can see and they can realize oh there is something and then we uh, combined it with with animation with abstract animation to show um, um, complex uh, um, situations within uh, productive areas uh, you can't um, open because of uh, of uh, the physical um, uh, surroundings and so we we created this uh, again in combination print and uh, coding and 3D to create a whole uh, a complete showroom and in the uh, lower image you see also there are the 3D elements and in combination with, with hardware again the sliding um, uh, displays uh, can be 
um, can be moved by the 3D elements. And uh, also for museums, uh, it was a, a good way to, to create content for terminals. Um, I created the terminals um, by um, manufacturing the coding and the graphic design and the 3D. And at, at the point where we, we started to use it also for visualization in, in video, uh, we found out uh, that um, a colleague of mine who is um, an object designer, production designer, um, and worked with CAD, with SolidWorks, that we, we, we came to a point that the realism is not enough. So this is really a uh, rendering from SolidWorks um, and uh, we, or, or he, also ran into a, a situation where he can't, um, he, he can create the geometry, but he can't visualize it for his clients. And as you can see, something like this, uh, you can't believe that uh, this object costs 10,000 euros or so, and you get an image like this to get a, a feeling of the object, it, it doesn't work. So we, we try to find a way to get the data from his uh, CAD program from SOLIDWORKS directly into a ray tracer to render the images in a, in a complete new way. And we tried a lot with Blender and third party applications to, to find a way to, to get the data out of SOLIDWORKS into Blender. And there are only two situations we are running into. Um, uh, the first is we get very huge files so that the render time exceeds and we, we, we can't handle it. Or the quality is not enough to, to take um, close-ups and uh, to show it um, to the client. And so we started using Modal because Modal or Luxology um, started very um, um, early to get a workflow between CRD and a hard surface modeler. So um, as Modal 501 came out, you um, have the ability to use in Windows, a SolidWorks kit for Modo to get the SolidWorks data into Modo. It was the beginning and the, um, the quality of the mesh was, was okay. So you can work with it and you can, you can handle it. And these are the, the first res results we, we get with, uh, with this way of working. And for us, it was a complete new feeling of, of doing things because uh, uh, your deeds can uh, uh, could create um, his uh, visions in SOLIDWORKS and I can get the data directly out of SOLIDWORKS and render it into Modo. And uh, these are um, objects uh, that um, uh, wasn't um, product um, um, created at that time, so um, they are only created inside the computer. But you uh, can believe me, as the clients see these images, um, they were uh, more impressed than seeing these images before directly out of the, the CAD programs. And then we, we started to uh, go a little bit further, so variation comes into play. So um, up from, from, from this object here, there uh, were uh, 76 variations possible within color and uh, placements of the, of the parts of the scavenet. And um, there was a really great way in Modo with passes to batch render it out. So we can take one scene um, 
and replace the elements, replace the colors and um, um, every time we can use it again with close-ups to show details of uh, the objects and uh, this was really funny because uh, one day uh, before we used this uh, for production um, the uh, the whole front uh, changes because the the glass element was changed a little bit for us no problem because we can re-render it only uh, at that part um, say you did it with a photographer it would be a little bit more complicated because uh, you have to tweak it in Photoshop or something like that and so the, this in combination with the CAD elements from SOLIDWORKS and the rendering within Modo makes uh, really good results for us and we um, played around with, with whole uh, rooms with light settings, with, with other elements we can, we can load in and uh, create complete scenes to show not only the, um, uh, the object because uh, CAD programs like SOLIDWORKS uh, have the program you, you can really uh, create good renderings from, from single objects today but if you want to place it in an environment, in the surrounding um, it, uh, it is not really possible to do something like that. that. And uh, uh, in, in this case the camera is uh, directly imported from SOLIDWORKS and uh, the surrounding and the environment and all the other objects are loaded into a model as assets. And so we are able to um, create multiple scenes to, to show to the client. And um, then we found out that it not only worked for interiors, uh, but also for technical presentations. And also this is a CAD object loaded directly into Modo, um, especially at, at uh, rounded areas. It makes some problems to, um, to handle with, but um, uh, the um, the plugin that Modo uses for importing CID data is getting better and better each version. And so um, something like this you can load in directly and use after a, a few minutes directly in your pre preview renderer in, in Modo. Um, and also to to show characteristics of, of elements. It's it's very good for the companies uh, like this the, the, the glass and the, the wood um, can change in many varieties um, in, in this object here and uh, to uh, shoot several photos with a photographer, it's, a photographer it's, it's much more easy to, uh, to build a scene into model with the CAD, CAD data from the, from the company and then only change the um, materials within Modo, and uh, always with the with the uh, possibility to to create uh, detailed shots to show some characteristics of the product, and all that together we um, try to uh, bring to a to a point that we can create um, all the uh, imaginary all the uh, images we, we need to um, to show the um, uh, build up objects um, we we created several scenes uh, scene setups for single objects uh, within rooms or within environments um, and we were um, creating this as our normal workflow and um, all that we learned over the years um, about this, um, I, I tried to, to bring together in, in, in this scene here, where I um, show people how easy it is to, to use CAD data directly for creating photorealistic renderings. So this, this is a scene with a CAD 
a table, all the other elements are assets uh, that can be loaded in. It's uh, fully rigged, so you have the chance to to animate, uh, say the uh, the the MacBook there or the chair. I will show it in a few minutes, and the light and um, all the um, uh, the post after importing it into Modo is only to set the materials and to to bring in the assets and to set the lighting and you have a complete scene where you can work with uh, um, with um, what you can uh, work in um, in detail then so to to show uh, how easy it is to to load something in in modo as a cad object um, I uh, will show it uh, in live now because then it's it's much more easy to understand what's going on there. Uh, most of the times, uh, people are working with uh, uh, interchange formats as OBJ, um, and uh, OBJ to open OBJ in Modo is is really easy, and to use it is really easy because you can directly open the elements in in Modo as um, as mesh and to to work with it um, the only problem always is the is the material setting so um, to to set materials here because you 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 couldn't directly import the obj materials um, is uh, to, to handle is um, not as um, um, uh, isn't uh, a big problem because uh, often it is that you can uh, select the meshes uh, containing to a material uh, directly into the list view here. So I knew all that is um, connected to the material group aluminium. Uh, I just create a new material aluminium and can can go on there. You see here are all the material um, parts from the from the original object and uh, in the same way it's working with CAD objects in Modo. So if um, the if my colleague is is working in SolidWorks um, so that he uh, creates material groups I can assign them directly into into Modo and use them. And the way um, importing um, uh, CAD data in in Modo works in the same way. It's an it's an import plugin, so I can read directly IGES files, for example, or, or STEP files that are natively CAD files. And by opening uh, this I get an option menu and in the option menu there are three output um, items I can choose from. Um, really interesting are only mesh and CAD item. Um, the CAD item is, um, yeah, you, you can think of a reference item because it is possible to get data out of Moto back into SolidWorks. Because in, in a CAD program, every time I saw some, some transformation work uh, Jörg did in, in sort of works, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed because uh, some transformations that are in a hard surface model are very difficult to handle, are very easy in a CAD program. Because the mathematical uh, background of a CAD program is um, another way to, to handle um, the geometry. And um, also a, a hard surface modeler, uh, in, a hard, in a hard surface modeler I have the chance, uh, say with uh, sub D, uh, to, to model things very easy and uh, this, this kind of modeling is very hard to, to realize in a CAD program. So it's very interesting to, to use a CAD item as a reference item in Modo, model some elements that are not so easy to, to handle in CAD and bring it back in CAD. 
And as you do so, you, you get this item only if a res, uh, as a reference item in, in, in Modo, but you, you can't uh, work with it. It's very fast because it's only a reference, but you couldn't select bases or do any work on it. It's, it's like a, a, a container to work on. Um, as you directly import it into Modo as Mesh, it's this version here. Uh, let me see. Whoa. Sorry for that. I can't do anything. Okay. Yeah, no. Okay. So in, in uh, this version, I have uh, imported an IGES file directly into Modo. And now I, I get the chance to, uh, to work directly into Modo to um, modify this, uh, um, this mesh here. Uh, as I switch to my render view, you can see um, this is oh, from the quality really nice I have all the details I want to have here say like the the font here and the keys and the surface is uh, from the quality is is really great so the the easiest way um, th th this um, element here was uh, exported from a CAD program um, not with um, creating this material groups, but it is really easy to to set the materials in um, um, in Modo. As I start with uh, default map, say something like this. So okay, I can assign this here, and then I can go directly into the mesh and assign the materials as I want, say for example grass, this part here, set it to translucent, get the glass here, okay, and perhaps this keys here, and to have have some metal inside here. So if if the the guy with uh, uh, that exported it from CAD uh, create this um, material groups, I I just go into my list and say okay, this material uh, was the was the new uh, uh, is the new chrome and uh, as he didn't do so it's a little bit more complicated to to select it and now we get here the chrome okay and now I can go on and set this in a surrounding uh, environment say for example this here And we have our CD object directly into a new environment. So, and with this, with this uh, workflow, it's very easy to to use natively CD data and get it into a photorealistic environment and to, to um, place that in a, um, a way uh, that is not possible directly out of a CAD program. Um, yeah, and um, this in, in combination with the Modo Integrated Node system makes it much more interesting 
uh, safe for uh, for animation, for example. And um, if you if you are working uh, like this, it uh, makes also sense for showing some um, some technical renderings. Say if you have this this switch here. Um, and want to show the inside of, of this uh, uh, part here. I have built up um, a normal cube here and I want to take this cube here as a cutter object to show the inside. So I just add a render boolean and use this render boolean with this cutter element and now you can see where I place this cutter object the CAD object will be cut up and you can see the inside and this is really handy because um, I, I know in, in CAD programs you can make cutters and um, um, uh, sections very easy but not within a photorealistic environment and, and this uh, makes really sense um, if you want to, to use the photorealistic environment but in combination with showing some, some details of, of your object and it's, it's very easy to do with, with this render booleans here and so you can you can get from from the um, uh, from an image a combination of photorealism and technical information. Um, and uh, yeah, one one other very interesting part of Modo um, that makes um, that makes it very interesting to to work with also uh, in combination with CAD is Mesh Fusion. Mesh Fusion was integrated into, into the Modo workflow uh, in the Nano One version directly. And uh, Mesh Fusion is, um, I think most of you know Booleans. Um, and Booleans uh, sometimes are a little bit uh, tricky because of the um, uh, geometry consistency. And uh, Mesh Fusion in, in Modo is a live Boolean system that you can use to, um, to create objects directly and to um, uh, directly in, in Modo and um, use the, the Boolean system to uh, create a live view of this. So as I take this two elements here switch into a uh, fusion item and say subtract I can subtract subtract the this cone icon from the barrel and this is completely live so as I switch my object to a polygon mode I can change the surface from the polygon and directly get the corresponding um, changes within the fusion mesh and that is is a very easy way to build something like say a uh, base or something like that for example for 3d printing I can now take this cylinder drag it onto my barrel and say subtract and also this element will be subtracted so um, um, the, this kind of working is very hard to do in, in CAD and solid work 
Um, so it's very interesting because you can take this here and bring it back to sorted verbs. And uh, the, the great thing about a sorted verbs, not only see this as a shape, as a, a, a hull, it sees it as object. You can calculate the, the mass of it. You can fill that with, uh, say, a material and can calculate how many material you needed in production. And this is a very interesting way to, to bring geometry in CAD that is very hard to create in, in CAD programs directly. And say for, for 3D printing, it's really great because you can um, directly export this as I take this fusion item here and create, oh, uh, I forget, forgot one thing. Um, you can directly UV unwrap this. You see mesh fusion UVs, I can create it. And as I um, use here my fusion surface, I can set the color. That's not a problem, but the great thing about this is I can directly get a UV mapped. There. Okay. It's directly map, uh, UV mapping the new fusion item. Uh, the only the thing is the the source items here have to be UV mapped and then for Modo it is possible to calculate uh, in real time it is again in real time as I change here this loop you see the UV map was uh, is, is calculated in real time uh, with the containing uh, sprites here and everything uh, works directly in, in real time. And then as I, I want to uh, say get this mesh for printing, say for printing I can convert it to mesh, give it a name, print create the new mesh file and then as I put it into a new file I can directly export it for print as I say export as and say as STL for example STL is a, a really good file format for printing and then I can for example for the Ultimaker 2 I can go in Cura, open this file and can directly print it. Um, one, one problem there is with the dimensions of, uh, of objects. So you have to be careful if um, you have a 3D program. Uh, in, 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 in Modo now my object here has a dimension of yeah, 1.6 meters and uh, as I look in Cura, it is um, uh, 136 uh, millimeters. So there is a variation, and you have to be careful. Um, it, it depends on the program that creates the 3D printing content and the 3D program um, you are using. Um, and you have uh, you have to find a way to um, um, to communicate between this this two. But uh, in in most cases you can you can uh, tweak the values here directly into into the program uh, programs to set it for 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 printing. 
Okay, and um, I, I think oh, no. Okay, uh, and and you see, this is a really great way to um, create something for CAD or or for three D printing. And only to show one other aspect of uh, working with Modo in in pipelines is as you create a scene and render out not the completed scene alone with the beauty pass but with the um, with the separated passes say specular and diffuse reflection depth pass you can uh, then go into a uh, post production or uh, composition uh, compositing tool like nuke and in in this case i have uh, um, um, my my single passes from the exr render uh, into nuke and here i can combine the single passes to the beauty pass image but with the benefit that i can control every aspect of the image directly into nuke say for example the reflection path or the lighting path and that makes it very flexible uh, um, also in combination with depth path where you can um, do the um, depth of field or the motion blurring uh, in post and not within the 3D program. Yeah, and so you can see uh, also for, for photo uh, photography, for um, animation or for um, compositing with a new After Effect, it's uh, a very flexible way to, to create uh, content in Modo and in combination with CAD, it makes more sense also for the, uh, for the production and designing and rendering process. Yeah, hope you enjoy and um, yeah, my my last many thanks for your attention. <laughs> Thank you.